So I think we can start. So our next talk is about uh, kickstart your sub other platform integration journey uh, with Microsoft. So it's uh, um, very important to, to have access to uh, cloud services uh, from, from SAP, from Microsoft, but also uh, from other uh, vendors. Uh, we will have a session in the afternoon also for AWS. And uh, I'm, I'm happy that we have uh, Martin Pankratz and Holger Buchel here from Microsoft, and they will show us no slides, but uh, everything about the Kickstart Your Integration. So, and they will hand it over to you, Martin and Holger, the stage is yours. Thank you, Domi. Well, the, uh, the architecture drawing that we will be showing to kick off will actually be uh, on a slide. Um, but I think that still counts, yeah, because the, um, it's very hard if you have multiple integration components, et cetera, uh, to keep track of what's happening. That's why we always put a picture first. But maybe, Holger, next time we put it on Visio or Drawer so that we can... Yes, exactly. <laughs> the, the, ...the thing properly, yeah. Yeah, my name is Martin Pankratz. I'm in product management at Microsoft within the Azure Core platform team. And there we collaborate with SAP as our engineering partner. Um, so when we develop pr um, products together and um, also uh, Holger and I, we collaborate internally with all the Microsoft products where there's an SAP interface. And ABAP is core to many of those things. So that we're happy to talk about this some more. A couple of words about you, Holger. Yeah, uh, Holger Bruchelt, also part of the same team as Martin, actually. I'm also working on the SAP and Microsoft integration topics. And yeah, looking forward to, to our discussions now on ABAP and Microsoft integrations. Okay, so then let's dive in. I'm going to show the overview uh, drawing, what we're going to show you today. And that's from here. <clears throat> if I'm lucky, I can click the button there. So we'll be starting from our development tools in Eclipse. And everything we um, show in the environment today uh, will be from uh, embedded Steampunk. That's the um, like the ABAP environment in with the ABAP cloud flavors in on S4 as of the 2022 version. Um, but you see, um, you saw today also the BTP ABAP environment and all the scenarios that we have available for you uh, cover both platforms. But wanted to make sure that what we show today is available in embedded Steampunk, which is on premises and the private edition on your native environments on Azure, AWS, GCP. So it's uh, not limited to the BTP uh, flavor of this only. Yeah? And before we go deeper into the scenario, um, let me quickly go into the block series that um, covers everything that we um, that we offer for this. In here, we have multiple scenarios. Um, one of them is, for instance, from Excel, how to consume the uh, RUB services there. Another one talks about API management flavors for this. Um, there's even more progressive topics like GraphQL, and one that was published recently, where we talk about how you can store the stuff that you do in ABAP Cloud um, in hyperscale and native environments. And the focus of today, the embedded Steampunk flavor. Um, there we have something that um, does Microsoft Teams integration for approvals of processes, for instance. And the topic that we talk about today will be about um, calling APIs um, in Microsoft's AI portfolio. Yeah, so everything in here, fully curated, um, fleshed out with GitHub repositories so you can recreate all of those scenarios. Um, but the, we will be deep diving in this one uh, and listed down here. Okay, so back to the presentation. We will be splitting the demos and uh, Holger will be working on the uh, email inbox. Maybe you want to talk a bit about what's going to happen there, Holger? Exactly. So, I mean, what we'll see then, or what we'll start with, and I mean, we had um, uh, Thomas Fiedler um, currently just talking about ADT and, and stuff like that, how to generate things. And this is basically our, our starting point where we will see how easy, and I guess most of you know this, how easy it is to really create um, not only the OData services, but also the Fury screens um, to then interact with your data on the on the SAP system. Now, 
what we then want to do is, um, which is actually a scenario that we see with lots of customers where they're coming um, invoices or additional um, information via email. So, so that's what we want to do on top, basically. So our flow starts with an email that is sent um, to you, maybe to a shared inbox, maybe to you as the uh, functional consultant or whatever in your company. And then what we want to do there, we want to extract or, or react on certain emails, um, extract relevant information. So, so maybe there's a PDF document or something like that, and then hand this data over to, to our SAP system. And the way how we do this actually is using um, Power Automate. So Power Automate has some um, nice um, triggers and integrations in the Microsoft world. I mean, there, there are lots of other triggers there as well, but, but also in the Microsoft world. And then what we can do with Power Automate is look for any attachments that are um, in the specific email and then use um, something called um, an AI builder to evaluate um, the documents or the, the content of, of a specific document. And once we have all this information, we'll call the SAP system with the very same OData service um, that is also used by the SAP Fiori user interface to create the data in our SAP product catalog. And this is still relevant today, Holger, right? So when we talk to customers, we very often hear, we would love APIs, but we're getting Absolutely. faxes and emails. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So, I mean, um, uh, uh, you, you, yeah, before we go to the Azure Open, I mean, you, you're absolutely right. I mean, ideally, the integration with your suppliers or with others is directly via APIs. So that this um, workaround with um, sending a PDF document or something like that is gone and you can interact with the SAP system. But actually, if you talk to customers, in a lot of cases, there is still this paper-based, even if it's a digital paper-based um, process. And, and that's what we're trying to, to cover here that we're saying, well, even that is not such a big deal, basically. Good. Now, one thing that we'll see is um, in, in some cases, the information that is then sent in these documents are not uh, complete. There they are, they are things missing, basically. And in our scenario, what, what we'll do is um, we will see that um, the description, some, some information is actually mis missing. And instead of asking the functional consultant or the, the person who is responsible for, for um, extracting the information from this document into the SAP system, we'll want to give them some guidance, some help. And that's where we'll use um, Azure OpenAI to generate some, some texts. And obviously, in, in this step, um, we'll show you how, how actually simple it is from ABAP to call Azure OpenAI to leverage the OpenAI functionalities. Um, and then, again, in our case, we will just generate um, a, a text. But potentially, this could obviously be much, much more and much more complicated scenarios there as well. OK. Good. So, Martin, can you show us? I mean, for, for me, honestly, I, I, I'm not such a big ABAP. Guy. I mean, I had my time where I did some ABAP development. So for me, it was great to revisit um, ADT and then play around. And honestly, I was surprised um, what you showed me there, what is already possible. But maybe you can start and, and guide us through the steps that we have already prepared on the um, ABAP side. For sure. Yeah. My, my pleasure. So here we are looking now at uh, ABAP development tools that you're very much familiar with already. And um, I want to start the, the journey that we took for this prototype uh, actually with the custom table. Yeah? So this is also shared via the GitHub repo that um, was attached <laughs> to our scenarios. And th this is really simple. Yeah? We defined the, the, the client. We came up with a, a product UUID and some of the fields that we expect to come from the PDFs and also for this type of use case that we want to store. And then here you can already say, I want to have currency codes and be interpreted like this. And you see here the description is um, at 200 characters. Um, this is, will be relevant later on. Huh? And from this table, it's this one. This is like the, the coolest thing to me. Um, what's, what, what's new to ABAP Cloud? You can just click generate ABAP repository objects. And at that point, it will generate all the things that you see here. As you, more, many of you know, you get your data service, you get a theory preview, you get the behavior definitions, and all the things that drive the behavior of this service is pre-generated for us. 
And when we did this exercise, once the, the new ABAP cloud flavors became available to us after we upgraded our systems, this is just now an exercise of like maybe one hour yeah? until the whole thing starts moving. Yeah? And, and that's really uh, like one of um, big advantage. Yeah? And then honestly, for, for me, that was, um, that was one of the biggest super positive surprises where I was really impressed because um, um, when when I was still at SAP, I, I was actually part of the the team that developed the SAP Gateway um, functionality at that time, or at that time it was called SAP Netweaver Gateway. And there, um, the, the the colleagues released the SEGW um, transaction, um, which which we used to from a BAP um, generate um, or data services. And there was so much work. And then you, you finally had the create functionality there. But then maybe the filtering, you couldn't filter, you couldn't browse, you couldn't do a dollar top or something like that. All of that was missing. And we didn't even talk about the UI, the Fiori UIs. And here, it's it's really, really impressive. With a with a few clicks, you can not only create the OData service, a fully fledged OData service, but you can also create the, the, the UI to that, the Fiori user interface. So, so I think that for me was was really fantastic to see. Yeah, so um, I will copy the service error here uh, so because you will need that uh, in a second, Holger, right? So I'm providing mm -hmm. that to you for the integration channel uh, effort. And from here, I'll open the, the preview um, to, the, to the Fiori app. So this is what we get out of the box, yeah? No mm -hmm. coding, just some configuration on the table, and I already have a fully fledged service, including preview of the UI. So when we load this, uh, I already put something here, like one one entry, and then from from there onwards, we will be feeding this from the PDF documents that we receive via email, right? And when we um, click create. In here, this is what we'll be looking for. Yeah? Like you found on the table, some ID, category, names, some price and currency. And I think we, we talked about, I mean, this is the, the user interface, but under the hood, there's an OData service, right? Mm -hmm. So um, calling the OData service, I think what I think best practice, or it's always good to test exactly via Postman or um, any REST client, basically. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so I need some more space here. It's overlapping. <clears throat> so in here, um, I'll be requesting a specific product, or we can just go for for all of them. So let me drop this, and then we'll get the list there. If I have the right um, authorization here, because I put it on a different one. But so, yeah, <clears throat> you, you're just calling the OData service now. Um, obviously, I mean, we have here basic authentication, so you also need to provide the authorization header um, uh, so, so that we get access to it. Yes. And then, yeah, perfect. There we go. And I'm already requesting the CSRF token here because in the next step, when I want to create something, that's what OData demands of me, right? Next to the authentication, I also need to have for the... Um, um, like parallel processing, etc., making sure that concurrency control is met. Yeah? So we still have the, the fetch to CSRF token. So in here, we see the same value that we saw in the Fiori preview. Yeah? So this OData service is functional. So when you use this now from the Microsoft services, you will be able to interact with it. Yeah? And mm -hmm. I can also create a new one. Again, providing on the header the token that we fetched before. And then you can send a new entry to to um, see that it's actually working. Yeah. Cool. So, so so doing this manually, if you want to do any create update operations, you always need to have these two calls that you first fetch the token, and then once you have the token, then you can actually yeah provide the token in the create or update call, and then if you click on send. I get 201 created. Perfect. <clears throat> so maybe if you go back to the Fiori app, yeah, exactly. We should now see. Nice. OK. So now we know the Fiori app is working. We know the APIs are working. Mm -hmm. So I think with this, we can 
take a look at our business process, right? We can continue with our um, process on the email side, so to say. Yes. So I'll stop sharing so you can take over. Mm -hmm. Let me do this. I am sharing now my screen and now I'm in the Power Platform and I'm in um, Power Automate. So, and um, I, uh, I, I'm the business user now. I have no clue about um, ABAP. I, I, I don't really know about um, all these OData services. The only thing um, that I got from Martin is uh, this, this URL basically. But what I want to do is I um, want to create a flow now that um, when an email arrives, oops, let me spell this correctly, arrive, arrives, take the attachment and let's start by and send a notification to teams so this is i'm the business user that's the only thing that i know basically so i um i ask power automate and you can already see it it suggested a flow that has a trigger when an email arrives that oh that also notices that there are potential more attachments than once so so it does a for each loop over the attachments and it even has an action to post a message as the flow bot to a user. So, so this looks actually pretty good. So it asks for, for permission. Obviously, it needs to have access to my mailbox. It needs to have access to Teams in order to um, post some information. But now um, Power Automate basically creates this, this flow for me. Now, I could go through all these steps. Um, obviously, I need to specify like um, sh you should only react if, if it comes um, from, from a certain recipient, maybe from a certain supplier or something like that. Or, or maybe I, I need to add um, some additional information on the attachments. Now, in order to, yeah, now I know what you mean with this. How can I get rid of this bar? Well, okay, well, here, I think. Uh, so, so what I've done already, I've um, added a few more things. So as you, you, as you can see here, this is when an email arrives, um, the attachment. Now I have one thing that extracts the information. So we're using um, something called like the AI builder that, that looks at the document. And then it actually posts um, uh, um, some notification to Teams. And it also calls the OData service that I got from Martin and um, actually creates or um, puts in the name, the category and the price because, wait wait a second, I, I need to get rid of this zoom bar here. How can I move or let me, this is easier. Yeah. So so um, <clears throat> um, what, what we'll do is we'll, we'll send a document like this where, where we have some unstructured text um, and stuff, but we luckily also have um, uh, a, a table with the product ID from our supplier. We have the product category, we have some prices and we have the product name. And uh, yeah, so so I would say, let, let's give it a try. Let's um, uh, send this email. So so he, here are new products. Let's send this e um, email over. So this is this diverse goods um, PDF document. So what should now happen? Um, this, this email should arrive, obviously, hopefully. And then um, this Power Automate flow should pick up this specific email and then start the process. Uh, I Sorry, I closed um, my Teams. Let me actually open up Teams here. Then we can see um, the incoming notification. So quickly looking back at our Power Automate flow, if I go in here, um, Those Teams notifications are quite popular yeah? because then um, you don't have to check multiple systems. It just gives you the hint. All of this went through and it went fine. Yeah? So I don't need to go check for it. No? Exactly. And, and the cool thing is, I mean, here right now, I'm just posting a message. But potentially, I could have here a confirmation step that, look, this is what I extracted from the PDF document. Um, is this really um, true or are there some, some errors? Are there some, some other mistakes in there? Um, so there's a potential um, feedback loop that I could implement here in Teams. Um, let's give one more second. Or maybe, I mean, in the meantime, hopefully the, um, the products have already been created. But let me scroll here to our Contoso and the product discussion. 
and you can see so this is 1109 so this is this is right now so we can see um, there have been let's see uh, these products have been um, found and created so this sky 16 with the name sky the, the, the breeze with with whatever and um, so, so these products have been extracted by the PDF document and um, should now be available in our SAP system. Martin, shall we go, shall we go okay. check? Yeah, let's let's check. Uh, do I need to stop or can you take over? I will take over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try to refresh. So this is the state we had before. Now <laughs> you, you ran the, the requests. So if I hit go, there we go. Nice. Yeah, but not fully nice, Holger, right? Because we don't have descriptions yet. So You're right. <laughs> that's that that's missing. That's not good. So so this is definitely um a lack. Well unfortunately our supplier didn't provide us with all the information. That's a little uh unfortunate. So how um can we get these descriptions in? Yeah, so the the steps that we took um, to, to get there. So the my my um, CDS view or my my wrap service and the behavior here um, got an enhancement in, in in the meantime. So we have this determination that allows for us to call an additional method on uh, on the safe part of the lifecycle of this object. Yeah. So whenever we create a new object uh, as part of the safe procedure, we are able to call this method. And as mm -hmm. we said at the beginning of the scenario overview. Um, we're looking to generate um, a description uh, proposal yeah, that can be then either fine-tuned so that you speed up the process of describing the, the products yeah, with something nice there. Mm -hmm. And there we have the uh, AI SDK um, for, for SAP that um, we provide as Microsoft uh, to all of you as an open source project that gets you um, the codings that you need for that. Let me quickly bring the page this will all be linked um, and shared with you afterwards. Um, so there's a nice uh, GitHub I.O. page that describes how this SDK works, how you can import it with ABAP Git, for instance. Um, that's one of the um, major means of how you get the ABAP code into your system. And from there, you get a description um, how, how to use it. And we are using the completions uh, feature. You know? So we're providing it some inputs like the category and the name and use the completion feature of Measure OpenAI to, this, to, to render a description. And in here, it tells you what's all needed to get this done. Yeah, so really, uh, the colleagues made some big efforts there with videos and um, nice descriptions to make it as easy as possible for you. And when we go back... Should we maybe quickly take a look at um, the Azure OpenAI functionalities? Yeah, sure. So then we move back to you Holger. yeah let me let me quickly again share my screen so before we call um the uh, ai services now um from from abab um maybe we can just play around and and see what is possible and and how it works basically so so what i'm doing now i i'm here um in the uh, azure ai studio and the Azure AI Studio is basically the, the front end to a lot of different models. So obviously there, there are the GPT models from OpenAI, GPT-3, 3.5, GPT-4. But here I could, for, for example, also use the Llama 2 model from, from Meta or, or even open source models. They're, they're all available here um, in the uh, AI Studio. Now, what I can then do, I can um, deploy uh, these are oh, sorry, I have already done this here, these, these different services, and then I can really go into the playground and we can see um, what is possible. So, so I mean, I, I can um, just start a chat here by, by just um, typing in hello. But obviously, in, in our specific case, um, I want to have um, please create a description for the product called, what was it, Sky, I think was the first. Yes. which is a laptop i think it was a laptop true so let, let's give it a try here so we'll ask it to create a description and ooh, the, 
Okay, that, that's a good description. That's way too long, the, the table can only hold 200 characters. <laughs> okay, good point. Then let's do the following. Um, let's do the same again, but um, in 200 characters. Characters, more or less. <clears throat> So uh, we'll just, oh, now this is crisp here. Introducing Sky, a powerful laptop with a sleek design. It features an Intel processor. Okay, I mean, we, we, we already said someone needs to review this information, but but I think that's a that's a good starting point, I would say. And this is uh, an iteration that you would take in any of those uh, projects where you fine tune first in such an environment until you're happy before you put it into code, right? And exactly, can, but we can probably get do much better than this. Yeah, maybe give it uh, a flavor of of Homer Simpson next. Okay, uh, then let's let's do this again, but not only with two hundred characters or less. Um, um, in the style of Homer Simpson. Let's see. Hmm, Sky laptop. It's a computer, but better. <laughs> Cool. It's so powerful. It makes your head spin, and the battery lasts longer than my last donut. So cool. So so I mean, um, it, it's 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 nice. It, it it took a little more information, and uh, uh, created a, a good description. But obviously, we want to use this from ABAP, right? I mean, um, this is now this is a nice playground. But in order to um, to use this, I mean, we we could. Um, uh, create um, or enhance the flow. Create really um, different prompt flows that we can use. We can we could enhance the system message. We could add additional data and stuff like that. But in our specific case, I think the the only thing that is interesting for for you is the endpoint that you need for for the ABAP site yep. and um, the uh, the Azure key uh, or the API key for our. Um, uh, Azure AI, Open AI, Azure AI API. Mm -hmm. So maybe let me give you this information, and then let's see what you can do on the ABAP side with this new um, APIs. Okay. So as we said before, we are now here um, in the um, the classes that got generated when we said generate the ABAP repository objects out of the database table. And here's the method that I introduced before with the determination that runs on, on the safe process. And in here, I already prepared the um, necessary lines of code using the AI SDK that, that we provide for Microsoft to um, make those calls. So let me uncomment this. So source code, remove comment. So we are now saving this and activating let's have a quick look from uh, top to bottom obviously we need to instantiate the um, the instance of this sdk there i provided the parameters that Holger just gave me you need to choose with which api version you're using and then um, we are walking through the process of creating um, the, the the inputs that the service wants from us so, we saw the system message before. That is what I'm creating here, uh, telling it I'm a creative product description assistant, which gives context to the AI. <clears throat> and then we also had the option here to provide uh, existing um, values to um, like create more or get a higher precision, precision of the outputs. This one uh, is commented out for now. Um, but this is part of the, the sample if you walk through the, the block series that I provided. Yeah? So because the, this product scenario is quite straightforward, so the results are good even without providing uh, like samples that already existed in your system. But in other use cases, this is really required to get a good level of precision of your outputs. And then down here, we are walking through um, through the uh, through the result, creating um, the the prompt. And then actually send the request uh, to the completions API on, on Azure OpenAI with the model that Holger just showed. Yeah. Every, everything goes fine. We then append back into uh, the views so that it actually adheres to what our cloud um, wants from you um, to have this in, this, in the wrap uh, way of doing things. 
then there's some more error handling so that if everything uh, works fine, um, this is displayed as we expected. So this is now activated, uh, published. So and if, let if me... I go delete a couple of things uh, from the view, we can try again, see what nice descriptions we are going to get. Yeah, let me resend the email. Wait, wait, still deleting. Oh, okay. <laughs> delete it, okay. Okay, the email is sent. So uh, as before, I mean, we don't need to switch over, obviously, but um, now uh, in a second, uh, the Power Automate flow should pick up these emails um, or this one email. It should um, extract the content from our uh, uh, PDF document and then um, use the uh, OData service or the OData connector to create these um, documents in the SAP system. Um, this time, hopefully, the AI SDK will kick in. It will use then the uh, Azure OpenAI services to generate the description. And yeah, hopefully, we'll, we'll see them in a second. Maybe you can give it a try already. Yeah, no, not yet. Not no, yet. No. OK, let me, let me double check if um, this already went through. No, not yet. I still see it's it's running. Um, let me check again. It's still running, running, running. But now it should be created, actually. Okay, uh, do we get a drum roll? That's always exciting to see Jenny <laughs> I at work because you never know <laughs> what you'll get. What happens? Okay. But it so, looks good. Uh, we did include the Homer Simpson, <laughs> so <laughs> this is some um, yeah, not Homer Simpson related. Uh, I like the mouse here. Zap away with precision and speed. Yeah, cool. <clears throat> Breezy headphones. Maybe next time we put something in here um, um, to to satisfy your need to get a new laptop, right, Holger? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> we should definitely do that and then look for, for a new laptop for me. And I see another improvement item here. Um, the currency, uh, I think we defaulted it to US dollar, but I saw we had the euro sign on the on the PDF. Yeah, oh, good point. Something yeah. we, could, we could enhance now. But keep in mind, this is just a, a, a short a prototype, um, especially, for example, if I look at um, this Teams integration, for example, I would definitely have an approval step in there that uh, um, verifies if um, everything is correct. And also here with the description, I, I think it would be maybe that's a good inspiration um, for for someone. But uh, there, I mean, obviously, someone needs to look over this information and um, curate the data then in the end, but but I think it, it's it's a good enabler uh, to get you started. Yeah, definitely. Well, you could just go in here and then start editing huh? once um, this just gave you a starting point, which is not a empty field yeah? uh, to, mm -hmm. to get you there faster. Yeah? OK, then I would be sharing now from the uh, picture so that we can reminiscent about the uh, what we just saw. Share screen. screen. Well, this is again the whole flow that we did. <clears throat> PDF inbox using the AI builder to extract the information. And then from there, enriching that with additional um, capabilities from ABAP to fill the description with something meaningful based off the things that we extracted from that PDF document. And we were able to use this all from the uh, generated Fiori screen through enabled through the OData services that uh, came with it. And when we look at the deployment view of this, we have the uh, SAP um, S4HANA 2022 in our Azure environment, but it could also be on-premises anywhere in where, where you are today. You just have to be able to use embedded Steampunk uh, to replicate this whole scenario. But actually the AI SDK, also our ABAP SDK for, for Azure, uh, runs on um, also non-ABAP cloud compliant uh, systems. Yeah? So you can even 
do the same thing without ABAP Cloud or embedded Steampunk. So that's also possible. You just don't get the nice rough generated servers, etc. Yeah? So on the Fiori side and the Odata part, you have more work to do if you're not on those more recent releases of, of S4. Um, but it's completely doable. Yeah? So you don't have to be in the latest and greatest. And of course, all private. Yeah? The Azure OpenAI service instance is VNet in injected. So it's only available within the scope of our virtual network uh, on, on the Azure instance. And um, we, we configured Power Automate to be able to talk to those services. So anything else you want to mention at this point, Holger? No. Um... I maybe maybe only the, uh, the the last thing since since I also saw something in in the chat right now, we will come to the documentation in a second. But um, this is really something that you can. I think all of this is available really in a, in a trial version, right? So so you can easily start to reproduce it. You, maybe you need to sign up to some of these services, um, but but it's definitely something that you can easily uh, do in your own environments, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then we can go here. So there, there's the um, the QR codes lead you to the block series that I showed at the very beginning, the the one here at the bottom left, where you find all the embedded steampunk and the steampunk um, scenarios implemented, including the GitHub repository, which gets you the ABAP snippets, tells you which SAP developer tutorial was used uh, to get started. This one leads you to the documentation of the ABAP AI SDK. Um, that we use today for uh, generating the description. And the one on, at the bottom right here uh, leads you to the overall ABAP SDK for Azure that is available for um, everything that is in outside of ABAP Cloud. Yeah? And there you get integration with our service bus, with Microsoft Entra AD or Azure AD um, or Logic Apps. Yeah? All the Azure services that are relevant um, have in their um, ABAP classes that get you to integrate them uh, much faster. Yeah? Of course, you can always integrate yourself, um, but the purpose of this is to really uh, get you there um, in a, like a managed, easier way. And this is uh, developed by our internal um, Microsoft uh, department that runs Microsoft SAP services and uh, systems. So this is really already quite mature because we use it um, for our uh, global systems already. Yeah? And we have other partners and uh, customers giving feedback there through GitHub open um, issues and uh, pull requests. Um, so this is really something where you can shape it with, with your needs. Mm -hmm. And in terms of getting started, right, Holger? Power Platform, Developer Plan, um, M50 Size Sandbox for free, free Azure accounts. So you can do all of this yourself without the need to, to sign up um, or to, to pay for any of the services for your easy samples to get started. Mm -hmm. And then maybe um, just another shout out to the to the first link there. I mean, obviously, in our demo right now, we, we only used basic authentication. So, so we, 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 we just used uh, username and password to authenticate to these OData services. Um, but uh, our, our colleague Martin Reple has done some very, very extensive blog posts on principal propagation. So how we can really set up single sign on. I think Martin, you also picked up a lot of these um, scenarios in your other blog posts that you've documented, um, yeah. how to do single sign on between the ABAP stack and um, the, the, the Microsoft side, basically. So I think this is, although we just showed it now here with basic authentication, this is definitely something that is also um doable in a in a real productive um setting where you where you require single sign on yeah actually we showed it um that now that we're talking about it in here the um i have a specific sa sample with the uh, steampunk environment using this with excel because of course in excel you would love to use your um, company account yeah Mm -hmm. And in, here we saw the, the same thing doing this with um, a basic out, right? Like we did today. But you can easily elevate this <coughs> with the guidance that we provide to be able to do it with your company account. It seems like it's not on mentioned on this block series. Uh, talk about token caching. Looks like I put it then in here yeah, for the 
I mean, what, what you're clearly showing is that there is so much content. So it's, it's definitely worth to spend some time on on this central blog post here and then jump to the individual blog post. Um, I think you also have to most of them, there's a GitHub um, repo um, yes. um, behind these blog posts. So it's also really easy to get started, to leverage this functionality, to build your own integrations. And yeah, I, I mean, we showed you the, the Teams integration, but I think also the, the Excel that you just showed is something that is very popular. So I think there are, there are really a lot of um, cool integration scenarios. That's true. Uh, do we have any questions on the chat that we want to answer that then we'll put out? Um, <coughs> I think that's it. <coughs> So, perfect, thank you. Uh, I checked the, the chat, but um, there are no questions so far. So, uh, maybe there are some one uh, we will cover in the in the meet the speaker session uh, um, okay. after the oh. next talk. So, mm -hmm. thank you very much. It was very useful. It's nice that it's it's can be integrated so smoothly into uh, all the rough stuff uh, of sub was a really great presentation and okay there were no slides <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, thanks martin thanks holger uh, we will see you again in uh, uh, about an hour and meet the meet the speaker session uh, thank you bye bye